At Death Before Dishonor, Jonathan Gresham and Josh Woods went to war for the Pure Championship, and after 20 grueling minutes, Josh Woods emerged the victor and the new Pure Champion, becoming the only man to beat Jonathan Gresham in a Pure Rules singles match in Ring of Honor. Doing this has placed Josh Woods in a new position, face of the division at the forefront of Ring of Honor's revival, the hunted kingpin rather than the hungry hunter. Josh Woods has blazed a trail of carnage through the center of the division, and in doing so, he is poised to not only be the most dominant Pure wrestler of all time, but potentially the most dominant wrestler in Ring of Honor. As a pure wrestler, Josh Woods has been nothing short of a tour de force, and that is reflected in his place in the standings of the division. At the time of this video, Josh Woods holds a 7-3 record in Pure Rules matches, tied for the second most wins in the division, as well as having the second most overall Pure Rules matches since the 2020 Pure Championship tournament began. In these 10 matches, he has accrued a staggering 20 rope breaks forced, tied with Jonathan Gresham and the patron saint of rope breaks, Tracy Williams, for the most among qualified wrestlers. To compare Josh Woods with Jonathan Gresham, his most obvious contemporary as the former pure champion, Gresham's 20 rope breaks forced have primarily come through volume, as four of Gresham's 13 matches have seen him not force a single rope break. While Josh Woods has had 10 matches in a row, his entire pure division career, where he has forced at least one rope break. This is a divisional streak that only begins to be approached by Tracy Williams, who has not only forced at least one rope break in all eight of his Pure Rules matches, he has forced his opponent to use all three rope breaks in six of them, with five of those being in a row. Josh Woods rests in the middle of these two men when it comes to the three-way tie of most rope breaks forced. He hasn't gotten there purely through volume, nor has he gotten there through pure efficiency. If we look at rope breaks forced per match, a stat gathered by taking every qualified wrestler, meaning that they have a minimum of three Pure Rules matches. We see that Josh Woods is in a five-way tie with two rope breaks forced per match, sandwiched perfectly by Tracy Williams with 2.5 rope breaks forced at number one, and Jonathan Gresham with 1.5 rope breaks forced at number 10. The separation between these three may only be half a rope break, but considering you can only force three per match, this is actually a very wide gulf. For example, if Jonathan Gresham wanted to reach two rope breaks forced per match, the shortest time that it would take to get there is to go from 20 rope breaks forced in 13 matches to 38 forced in 19 matches, meaning that he would have to have six Pure Rules matches, forcing three rope breaks in all six of them, and only then does he land on two rope breaks forced per match perfectly. For Josh Woods to fall as high as he has with as many matches as he has is astonishingly impressive. He is three matches shy of Jonathan Gresham and already looks him eye to eye in total rope breaks forced, and that is through sheer dominance. What cannot be understated is how proficient Josh Woods is at holding on to his own rope breaks, because nobody has even come close to him in that category. While he rests firmly in the middle of the total rope breaks used rankings with seven, Josh Woods is so far clear of his peers, it's borderline unfair. Compare his total rope breaks used to his peers from earlier, Jonathan Gresham and Tracy Williams. Those two rest at number one and number two respectively, with Gresham using 25 across his 13 matches, and Williams using 19 across his 8. While Josh Woods is in the middle of these two when it comes to total matches with 10, he has only used 7 total. Josh Woods is tied with his first opponent ever under pure rules, LFI's Kenny King. And while that might sound like a nice competitive rivalry, it absolutely is not. Kenny King just scraped by by having 3 pure rules matches to Woods' 10, and he has used the same amount of rope breaks. If it's not coming across to you how wild the statistic is, here is a list of the rope breaks used per match without Josh Woods on it. 15 names with varying stories across at least three Pure Rules matches. In order to give a bit more context before I reveal where Josh Woods stands, I'm going to highlight what I consider to be the adjusted Pure Rules rankings, meaning that it eliminates outliers who have gotten to a couple matches and then left the division. This is a list of experienced pure wrestlers who have had five or more pure rules matches since the 2020 tournament. This essentially encapsulates the entire foundation as well as Fred Yehi, and still does not include the current pure champion. That's because Josh Woods not only ranks dead last, he is the only wrestler to use fewer than one rope break per match among qualified wrestlers. Think about that. The closest wrestler in the adjusted rankings is Jay Lethal, who has used nine rope breaks across seven matches, good for 1.3 rope breaks used per match. But most of the rest of this list is closer to two rope breaks forced than Josh Woods is to one. This isn't just prolific offense that prevents him from being in trouble. This is a reign of terror. A lot was made about Jonathan Gresham's unique finish streak, and that is something that we will likely never see again. But in terms of raw data, this is nothing short of an anomaly. 
In a medium like pure wrestling with rope breaks firmly rooted in the meta, there shouldn't be a wrestler like Josh Woods who has had so many matches and uses so few of them. The regular progression of the division looks a lot more like Jonathan Gresham and Tracy Williams occupying the top two spots. That makes sense. Those two have the first and third most pure rules matches. And yet, there Josh Woods stands on his island, alone, probably not touching the ropes. While all of this could be gleaned from the pre-match breakdown before Jonathan Gresham and Josh Woods' match at Death Before Dishonor, available on the Ring of Honor YouTube channel, there are a lot more interesting details regarding Josh Woods' style that these numbers are the final answer of, but I think that, to truly understand how good Josh Woods is, I have to show my work. So if we take these overall numbers and we break them down further, looking at all 10 of Josh Woods' matches and the rope break stats that they hold, we can succinctly break them down into three categories. Rope breaks forced or used to escape a pinfall, rope breaks forced or used to escape a submission, and rope breaks forced or used to escape other. Other is a weird one because other is, ostensibly, open to the interpretation of the viewer, in this case me. What I used to describe the other category was something that was decidedly not a pinfall or submission. This mostly covers holding the rope to prevent your opponent from grabbing you for a suplex or other continued offense, and while there are a couple of interpretations, these stats are pretty accurate for better or for worse. We start this deep dive with the most impressive part of Josh Woods' game, his rope breaks used. Because there are so few, there isn't a lot to say here, but I do think that it's interesting. Three of his seven, good for approximately 43% of his total rope breaks used, were used versus Jonathan Gresham and basically came as a result of a penalty for not releasing holds when the two men were entangled in the ropes and a rope break was charged for each man. Because of this bizarre circumstance and not really knowing how to classify this, I can only categorize this as a rope break forced and used for each man, meaning that the only match Josh Woods has used more than one rope break in wasn't the result of being forced to escape trouble. It was the result of refusing to budge an inch on offense and being penalized. Beyond this odd outlier, the other numbers are pretty routine. The remaining four rope breaks used are spread evenly, with two used to escape a pinfall and two used to escape submission. But there is one more noteworthy statistic remaining for Josh Woods and his rope breaks used. Josh Woods is a perfect 5-0 when he uses a rope break. I can only theorize that Woods is so annoyed that he had to use a rope break that he gets hyper-focused and proceeds to bludgeon his opponent. Because it's either that, or when Woods is forced to strategize, he is undefeated, and I'm not really sure what is more scary. What is more interesting are Josh Woods' rope breaks forced breakdown. 11 of Woods' 20 rope breaks forced, good for 55%, are categorized into the other section, and this is explained very easily. Josh Woods will often have his opponent in his grasp, and in a desperate bid to avoid being thrown about by this absolute animal, they grab onto the ropes, not in a calculated effort to preserve themselves, but with fear. This fear manifests itself in many ways. It could be Silas Young using the ropes in an effort to roll Woods up in order to avoid the brunt of his attack by ending the match early, or it could be Will Ferrara desperately clinging to the ropes in order to make it just one more second into the match at the cost of his rope breaks. But both of these yield the same result. This is made even more demoralizing for the entire division with Woods' adaptation of former pure champion Doug Williams' rolling German suplex dubbed the Chaos Theory, a move that can be done from the ropes that Woods used to beat Will Ferrara and nearly finish Jonathan Gresham. To speak more about the fear that Josh Woods puts into people, we go into the last deep dive category, which analyzes the effectiveness of Josh Woods' signature Gorilla Lock submission hold. Josh Woods has been using this submission since the start of the pure championship tournament and beyond. But while Jonathan Gresham has made a career on unique ways to end his matches, Woods has honed this move into being his weapon of mass destruction that he has been able to go to repeatedly with deadly efficiency. Across his 10 matches, Josh Woods has applied the Gorilla Lock seven times in six matches. And in all of these instances, he was able to force a tap from his opponent three times and force a rope break four times for an efficiency rating of 100%. There is just no other word that can be used to describe the Gorilla Lock besides efficient. Every time it has been applied, it has forced the opponent to submit or desperately rush to the ropes in order to avoid being in it for even a second longer. If you look at the breakdown on the screen, you'll see an asterisk when it comes to the match with Silas Young. This asterisk is really interesting because, to me, it is a microcosm of Josh Woods as he made his push to become the pure champion and what an unenviable task it is to face him. At this point in the match, Silas Young has used all three of his rope breaks, all of them in the other category to try and prevent Woods from getting offense to gain momentum. 
but as the match wore on, Woods was able to apply the Gorilla Lock submission. Silas Young bravely fought his way to the ropes and was able to grab them, which should have contributed to the rope breaks forced by the Gorilla Lock total, but Young had already used all of his rope breaks, forcing him to tap out. To me, this encapsulates the inevitability of facing Josh Woods. At one point or another in the match, you're going to have to match wills with him. And when you do, you aren't going to be able to force him to take a step back. Josh Woods is a storm, and when you're caught up in his pull, you can grab hold of supports all you want, he's eventually going to get his hands on you. And when he does, you're at his mercy. Nobody's been able to match technique with him. Not even the great Jonathan Gresham could stand up to the current pure champion. Josh Woods has blazed through the division, leaving carnage in his wake, and every detail and analytic will prove that in droves. Josh Woods is a problem for anybody in Ring of Honor, within the pure division or out of it. And no matter what happens, Note this observer will be watching with bated breath at what he does next.